For those of you who are unaware, the mysterious Wagner Group has been generating quite a commotion on the African continent and around the world. This undercover private military group has come under scrutiny, particularly in Africa. They have been evicting French forces from strategic locations such as the Central African Republic, Mali, and now Burkina Faso. Hold on to your seats, since a similar scenario is unfolding in Niger, and all indications point to Chad as the next likely target, a country where roughly 1,000 French soldiers are stationed. What is the huge unanswered question? It is the fascinating puppeteer behind these tricks. On July 26, we see President Mohamed Bazoum of Niger being deposed by his own presidential court, which is currently imprisoned. General Chiani has stepped into the forefront following the coup and is now keeping an eye on things during this interim period. However, the precise date of his retirement remains a closely guarded secret. Meanwhile, in the heart of Niger's capital, Niamey, coup supporters go to the streets with a less than peaceful agenda, rioting, plundering, and even torching luxury boutiques. A tragic occurrence at the French embassy originally confused people, who mistook it for a Parisian scenario. Take a moment to picture this, Russian flags are flying high, as jubilant chants of long life Russia fill the air. What about the international community? Let us just say they were taken aback by this display of fealty, and would not you know it, there were nods of approval directed at none other than Wagner for the unfolding events. Enter Prigozhin, the head of the Wagner private military company in Guinea, who had some harsh words to say. He did not spare words, accusing colonial powers of uniting behind a system reminiscent of slavery, supporting the growth of unpleasant individuals and downright villains across the African terrain. President Macron, however, decided against this line of action, fearing that it would be regarded as intrusion. Speaking of France, tectonic upheavals are changing the country's African policy on a global scale. According to a June 5th story in Le Monde, France is planning to cut its military presence in Africa even further. Senegal, Côte d'Ivoire, and Gabon would have less troops, while Mali and Burkina Faso will send reinforcements to Chad and Niger. But heed the warning, if they do not play their cards well, they too may find themselves in the crosshairs of deportation. This, my friends, offers a terrible portrayal of French authorities' African policy. However, given the recent military turmoil in Niger, there is an increasing possibility of a major blaze sweeping the Sahel region. The Economic Community of West African States, ECOWS, is not minced words, stating unequivocally that unless the architects of this coup restore President Mohamed Bazoum, democratically elected, mind you, within a week since last Sunday, a forceful intervention could be on the cards. In January 2017, when the Gambia's ruler clung to power, despite election results, a powerful presence of 8,000 ECLBAS troops came in to put things straight. Senegal, on the other hand, is not shy about its goals. If others follow suit, they will have their own soldiers in Niger by August 3rd. The military takeover we have been watching has accelerated this significant transformation. Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, and Benin have just joined the list of participants. This cycle of instability, perpetuated by accepting coups and lengthy presidencies, is a story that ECOWAs should confront, according to Liberia's president. As time passes, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea increase their support for the recent military takeover. They have also declared that any attempt to reinstate deposed President Mohamed Bazoum will be deemed an act of war against all three countries. The situation is rapidly escalating, and our attention is focused squarely on the horizon of impending conflict. The air is filled with echoes of the alliances formed in the run-up to World War I. The discomfort in Niger's military hierarchy is apparent, and mounting tensions are driving strategic decisions. Notably, Niger sent General Salafu Modi to strengthen ties with neighboring Burkina Faso, indicating increased collaboration in the face of uncertainty. While it is unclear whether a tiny group of Wagner mercenaries can genuinely tip the balances on the battlefield, one thing is certain. The situation remains volatile. The enigmatic effect of certain materials, perhaps similar to the legendary shovel of Bamut, continues to cast a shadow. However, in the absence of diplomatic breakthroughs, we are on the verge of a big impasse, 
a crossroads that could very well lead us toward a significant confrontation on the African stage. As you might expect, the countries rallying behind the Niger coup have one thing in common, a history of military upheavals. Return your attention to Mali, a country embroiled in its own turbulent history. A coup in 2020 led President Kida, who had been in power since 2013, to retire. But that was not the end of it, for the military conducted another coup in May 2021, with Asimi Goida emerging as the new commander-in-chief of the armed forces. Not far away, Guinea saw its own political revolution, with special forces organizing President Conda's ouster in September 2021. Not to mention Burkina Faso, where President Kaboge was deposed by the country's own military forces. Dear viewers, the pattern here is clearly clear. Massive political transformations are the norm of the day across this tapestry of nations. The winds of change have blown across a nation once more, changing its leadership. Their leader was deposed for the second time in September 2022, in a spectacular change of events. In a stunning twist, a new figure emerged at the helm just a few months early in January 2022, none other than 34-year-old Captain Ibrahim Tra. Life seems to have an incredible ability to throw unexpected turns our way. This young army captain from Burkina Faso was rocketed from the ranks of the military to the highest office in the country, an intriguing detail that was not overlooked. Captain Ibrahim Tra appears to have a sizable fan base. According to reports, many young Burkinave ladies have fallen for his charm. Could we be seeing the development of a new generation of army captains who will achieve comparable success? Indeed, a common thread runs through these unfolding narratives. The forcible removal of democratically elected governments via military intervention. In each case, the Russian Wagner Private Soldiers Company has filled the hole left by the fleeing French soldiers. This repeating pattern has rung warning bells among ECOWS countries who are bracing for the possibility of similar traumatic transitions. All eyes are now on Chad, a crucial actor in this complex geopolitical dance. President Mohamed Debi occupies a unique position, with his ties to the West endowing him with exceptional significance. In a story that continues to enthrall us, his decisions could tip the delicate balance of power. In the midst of a decade-long struggle, their viewpoint is compelling. A quick glance at the map indicates the huge desert expanse that runs across the northern regions of Mali and Niger, a landscape that still supports active jihadist organizations. The larger map displays a connected zone known as the Three Borders, which connects Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, and is home to numerous extremist factions. Their influence is growing, and the cost to the African military has been enormous. Consider Mali, where the sad death of nearly 2,000 soldiers highlights the intensity of these protracted clashes. Similarly, Burkina Faso's military services have been badly struck, with 436 servicemen killed in the line of duty between 2015 and 2020, and an additional 314 fatalities expected from 2021 to 2023. A combination of news sources offers a bleak picture. As recently as February of this year, two different attacks claimed the lives of 70 Burkinave soldiers in just four days. Unfortunately, due to a lack of accurate information, the situation in Niger remains relatively ambiguous. However, estimations stretching from 2013 to 2023 reveal an alarming truth. The toll stands at a minimum of 443 military people who have died in action, offering as a striking testament to the security forces' initial casualties. This, dear viewers, is the harsh reality of a region in perpetual instability. A new chapter in Niger's story has begun, marked by a devastating setback. A heartbreaking 174 troops were tragically lost in a single month between December 2019 and January 2020. The harrowing climax was reached on January 9th, when 89 warriors were slaughtered on the battlefield, forever marking that date in Niger's military history. A sophisticated perspective develops from a Western perspective. The type of democracy widespread in the Sahel region, perhaps unintentionally, adds gasoline to an already raging conflict. We have seen a recurring pattern leading to the development of military dictatorships in these countries over and again.
Mali is an excellent example of this phenomenon. In 2012, an Islamist insurgency arose from the ashes of an ethnic revolt led by the Tuareg people. This group grew as a powerful force by uniting numerous tribes under the banner of Islam. It was not until the arrival of French forces in the 1890s that these relentless invasions came to a halt, retreating into the embrace of the desert. An important historical occurrence that is frequently disregarded by those in the privileged strata in favor of more selective readings from history. However, a casual examination of these events reveals a common theme, the Tuareg's persistent uprisings, even in more recent chapters of history, long after African states acquired independence. Their opposition to the governments of Mali and Niger was seen from 1962 to 1964, then again between 1990 and 1995, and again from 2007 to 2009. For the past six decades, their efforts have been guided by a persistent desire for independence or, at the very least, some form of political representation. Regrettably, this ambition has yet to be realized. A similar story happened in 2012, but with a new twist when Tuaregs from the north moved on the city. The Malian army was consistently outmatched, with many men abandoning their stations, casting a disintegrating air over the Malian military. Mali responded by sounding the alarm and recruiting allies to launch Operation Server. The 5,000-strong French contingent stationed nearby posed a significant challenge to the Tuaregs. When the jihadists were forced to retreat to the desert's outskirts, they resorted to guerrilla warfare, laying the scenario for a cordial welcome for French forces heralded as liberators upon their arrival in Timbuktu. In another convoluted twist, a new wave of Islamist insurgency erupted, this time led by the Fulani, also known as Poul in French. The Fulani, like the Tuareg, have a semi-nomadic pastoralist ancestry. Southern farmers increasingly sought access to Fulani lands for agricultural ventures as Mali's population grew from 5 million at independence in 1960 to 22 million by 2011. This rising need pushed the Fulani to arm themselves, resulting in their domination in the Three Borders region. Once sparked, this conflict soon spread to neighboring countries. While it may have the appearance of an Islamist insurgency, the root of the conflict is deeply entrenched ethnic discord. Following the 2021 coup, Mali's military regime sought new relationships after diplomatic ties between France and Colonel Goyna Soward. Their attention was drawn to different alliances, notably Wagner, an enigmatic Russian private military group distinct from the Russian armed services. It is critical to emphasize that the degree of Russia's direct involvement remains unknown. According to recent estimates, there is a significant detachment of 300 to 400 Wagner private military company members securely established at the core of the nation. Notably, the town of Segu has emerged as a conspicuous hotspot, with over 200 of Wagner's contractors apparently taking up posts since December 31, 2021. However, this unfolding drama has significant distinctions, a distinct shift in the tides. Russia's regional influence grows, and its open support for the coup leaders is now apparent. Going a step further, they have sided with the coupists, claiming unambiguously that Russia's intention is to liberate Africa from imperialist dominance, a pretext used to justify their steadfast support. Let us pause for a minute of reflection. If decolonization is simply a swap of a French military installation for its Russian counterpart, we are left wondering what the genuine substance of their philosophy is. This strategic shift has resulted in a fundamental shift in the geopolitical environment, a plot twist in a story that was formerly securely rooted in France's area of influence. In May 2022, Mali, for example, terminated its defense contracts with France and its European partners. And by August of that year, the 2,400-strong French contingent had left. The specter of colonialism or neocolonialism frequently hangs over these debates. However, on April 29, lively protesters in the capital city of Bamako called for the evacuation of United Nations personnel, especially troops from other African nations. Would not you agree it is a complicated web? According to recent sources, Wagner private military company members, totaling between 300 and 400, are strategically positioned at the heart of the nation.
Notably, the village of Seiyu has formed as a focal area, housing around 200 of Widener's contractors as December 2021 came to an end. This developing story, however, is marked by a clear shift. Russia's regional influence grows, and its open support for the coup leaders leaves no room for dispute. In an unusual twist, Russia has unambiguously backed the coupists, claiming that their objective is to free Africa from the grips of imperialist power, an allegation provided as proof of their everlasting unity. But, dear viewers, let us take a moment to analyze this. Is the mere exchange of a French military base with its Russian counterpart truly representative of decolonization? This strategic realignment has radically altered the geopolitical landscape, dramatically altering a narrative that was previously synonymous with France's area of influence. Mali, for example, made a crucial move in May 2022 by terminating defense contracts with France and its European counterparts. The departure of the 2,400-strong French troop contingent was a fate accompli by August of the same year. The specter of colonialism, even neocolonialism, frequently hangs large in the midst of these discussions. However, on April 29, lively demonstrations resonated around Bamako, Mali's capital, demanding the removal of United Nations soldiers, primarily made up of troops from various African countries. A patchwork of complexities, indeed. When we focus our attention to the maps, we get a better picture. The uranium mines are located near Arlet, more precisely within Tuareg territory. The physical proximity of these Tuareg territories to Niger presents a conundrum for the country, impeding any explicit support for their aspiration for independence. The problem arises as a result of a country losing its key economic lifeline, leaving it in desperate straits. But the issue remains, who is to blame for this unstable environment? The answer appears to entail a large number of players. The critical juncture that initiated the unraveling of France's military presence in Africa may be found in Central African Republic. Allow me to summarize the sequence of events. As the Salika rebels came closer to Bangui in the last months of 2012, President Francois Bozais looked to France for assistance. The Salika, a coalition of various Muslim ethnic groups, had revolted against the government. Despite being a numerical minority, accounting for only 10% of the population, they wielded power in the country's northern semi-desert regions. Their activities had a tremendous influence, aided by mercenaries from allied tribes across the Sudanese border. As we shift our attention to Chad, we come across yet another example of a lawless zone establishing a three-nation junction vulnerable to Islamist insurgencies. The Salika forces advanced towards the capital, leaving a trail of crimes in their wake over diverse Christian towns. This persistent march culminated in President Bozais's ouster in March 2013. In the aftermath of this catastrophe, the deposed leader appealed to France for help, a call that resonated even though France was already engrossed in its mission to deliver stability to Mali, only two months into its liberation effort. Those familiar with counterinsurgency operations understand that success in achieving a military objective may ultimately be worthless if the aim itself lacks meaning. The crux of this insight is the realization that success is not always equivalent with actual success. It is critical to emphasize that the French military remained adamant in its efforts to avoid being perceived as a neocolonial force, requiring a major rewriting of their rules of engagement. The French armed forces effectively stepped into the role of a policing institution, positioning themselves between the fighting factions, aiming to construct a sense of order in the midst of chaos. Unfortunately, this approach inadvertently conferred legitimacy on the Salika insurgents' gains, fueling the government's discontent. In response, the Christian majority within the nation took matters into their own hands, organizing their own militias. What ensued was a descent into chaos, a scenario that left French soldiers perplexed by the pervasive hostility directed towards them. Fast forward to 2016, a year that saw a smooth political transition and the inauguration of a new president. The French force of 2,500 troops left with a sense of duty completed, hailing the restoration of democracy. However, the ongoing conflict between the Central African government and the Salika insurgents remained unresolved. Given the Salika's small presence, about 10% of the population, 
election triumphs were often elusive. As a result, armed revolutions became their favored method of voicing discontent. As a result, the struggle raged on, with violence continuing unabated. As France withdrew, President Tu Adira was faced with the urgent task of maintaining security within major urban centers. Wagner steps in to fill the security void left by France's departure. The Russians, on the other hand, took a different path than their French counterparts. Their agreement with the Central African government was shockingly simple. Military support and training for the armed forces in exchange for access to the country's vast mineral wealth. Russians, unlike the French, avoided complex or ambiguous humanitarian operations or peacekeeping missions related to democratic values. Their allegiance was unambiguously with the government. As of May 2018, a resolute force of 1,400 soldiers had been dispatched with unyielding intent to shadow the Sulika rebels' movements, their pursuit steadfast and humanitarian concerns ignored. A noteworthy detail emerges here. The 2007 destruction of the French military installation at Barao. Because of its strategic location, this city ruled over the whole border region shared by Chad and Sudan. One cannot help but think that if the French had stayed at this outpost, the fledgling seeds of the Selika uprising might not have germinated. However, the arrival of the Wagner force altered the scene. They quickly claimed Barao, thus cutting off the Selika insurgent supply lines to rear operations areas in Chad and Sudan. Despite its simplicity, the method was incredibly effective. Here's an interesting fact. Wagner made a film on their adventures in the Central African Republic. The film, aptly titled Tourist, begins with a sequence that was nothing short of breathtaking when it first aired. Throughout the clip, the head instructor warns the newbies, termed agnarines, about the difficulties they would face when teaching African recruits, many of whom struggle with even the most basic understanding of gun mechanics. The background pulsates with the rhythm of recruits dancing and chanting. Consider the outcry that such lines would cause in a Hollywood production. Surprisingly, this scenario echoes the evolving narrative in Mali, creating a fascinating link. And now our attention shifts to Chad, a story lifted directly from the script of the Central African Republic. If this trajectory continues in the coming years, Russia will be the lone state rapidly expanding its sphere of influence. This far-reaching influence would create a geographical corridor stretching from the Atlantic to the Red Sea. If you enjoyed our presentation, a thumbs up and a subscription would be greatly appreciated. Catch you guys in the next one.